water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you And our God is greater our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And into the darkness you shine, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, Awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Stand against. Oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any Awesome in power, our God, our God. So good to be with you guys today. Let's go ahead and stand up as we continue our worship this morning. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested. Like a covenant of old, your love is adoring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon. With mercy for today, faithful you have been, faithful you will be. You pledge yourself to me, and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. You father the orphan, your kindness makes us whole, and you shoulder our weakness. Strength becomes our own. You're making me like you, clothing me in white, bringing beauty from ashes. For you will have your bride, free of all her guilt, and rid of all her shame, known by her true name. And that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, you will be praised. 
praised. You will be praised. With angels and saints we sing worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised. You will be praised. With angels and saints we sing worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised. You will be praised. why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Susan Miller. I'm one of the stewards here at 1548. We are so glad to have everybody here, either in person or virtually, so welcome. We believe in God and Jesus, and today we celebrate the day he's made, even though it's a little bit rainy. Um, a couple things. We would love to have more people volunteer. So every week when Matt sends out his email, there is a link where you can easily sign up to volunteer. So we encourage everybody to do that so you can see some fresh faces up here. Um, secondly, this week, as per CDC guidelines, if you have been vaccinated, you can choose not to wear your mask, both inside and outside. And then lastly, our nursery worker, Marlene Huerta, is graduating high school. So we will have a cupcake celebration on June 6th following church, and this will be a surprise. Um, so our uh, group Susanna, Marlene, and Elizabeth from the Women's Retreat, we are using our seed money from our project to um, collect donation to help Marlene um, with her college expenses. She's going to go to HCC and then um, hopefully transfer to a four-year anniversary at uh, university. <laughs> um, and a little bit about Marlene. She is caring, reliable, and enthusiastic. She's been part of the Heights High School National Honor Society, the Ladies of Power. She's played basketball for two years. Like I said, she plans to start at HCC and then transfer to a four-year university. Um, she will major in patient care with the goal of becoming a registered nurse. So um, I will be in the back after church collecting money, anybody who would like to donate. Again, it's June 6th, so we have a few weeks, and it is a surprise. Thank you. Um, I've kind of been reminded this week about um, all the great things that God has blessed my life with. Um, um, one of my uncles actually started this gratefulness text chain um, and has been, like, asking for all of us to say something we're grateful for. And, um, you know, big group text messages and group chains can sometimes be the worst. Um, but this is one of those times where, like, it's really been awesome to see all of my extended family members, my brothers, and my, my parents kind of sending in every day all the things that they're grateful for and all the ways that God has worked in their lives. And um, that's something that's really blessed my life And um, this week. And um, one of those things that I sent them this morning was the gift of worship. And um, I, as you know, I'm a teacher, and it's May, and it's crazy. And so at the end of uh, school, I've, I've honestly just come home and had a little time of worship to myself. And it's been the most relaxing and kind of soothing time um, with me and God, just because the day can be so crazy and so wild, and it's great to have that peace and that reassurance to come home to, and so um, I hope that this time of worship is that for you this morning. Um, let's go ahead and stand up as we sing. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say The blind say I can see it's what the Lord has done in me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. The river I will wait where 
my sins are washed away from the heaven's mercy stream of the Savior's love for me, and I will rise from water deep into the saving arms of God. I will sing salvation. Christ has set me free, and Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again, and Hosanna, Hosanna. you together. We're so grateful for the, the, the hand that you have guided our country with through this pandemic and the, and the vaccines that, that we've been blessed to have that, that we can start seeing the, the end of the, the pandemic and we can start seeing each other's faces again. And we're, we're so blessed that, that, is, that is, uh, we're capable of doing that now. We thank you for the body of Christ that's, that's here in this church and that's, that is here that is diverse and works in so many different ways and has so many different kinds of talents that that work in conjunction with you to, to give glory to you and to 
to form a presence in this community that we're able to go out within the community and, and bless others around us and see that the Lord is living in us and that's, that's the inspiration for others to find Christ and to find the salvation through Christ. I pray that you guide Angela this morning in her, in her sermon and in spirit is with her and the spirit's with us always. In Christ's name, amen. Standing on this mountaintop, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, never once did we ever walk alone. As we come together for communion, and let us take a time to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Communion is a time that we have together as a body to be still, 
to remember God's gift to us and the blessing he has poured out for all of us. I want to take a second just to read from 1 Corinthians as we prepare our hearts for communion. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and we had given thanks. He broke it and said, This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, and after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's take time as we together take the bread and take the cup. As we have this time to think about the debt that Jesus paid for us, we also have the opportunity to give back. At this time, feel free to write a prayer and connection card. At the very back, at the end of service, we'll have a chance to make an offering. And for those of us joining us online, you can make a donation online. Let's lift up our praise and thankfulness and doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Joy 
Good morning, church, beloved church. Grace and peace and abundance to you all. This is the time uh, in our service that we take a moment to focus on ministry in-house and out. And so I want to thank you all for your prayers. We prayed a couple of weeks ago for Rosalie's daughter who had COVID, and she did not make it. And Rosalie has prayed for all of you. And so we would love to bless Rosalie back. John has bought a sympathy card for Rosalie. It's at the back. Would you please sign it, even if you don't know Rosalie? Um, this is her third child that she's had to stand at the gravesite for, so send her your love. And uh, there's also a card for uh, Julie, was her daughter, for Julie's daughter as well. So if you would sign that, that's back where you picked up communion. There's always hope in the Lord, and so I'm going to tell you something else that sounds really down and heavy, but there is hope in the Lord, but we would be remiss if we did not say that our missionaries that we support, Mark and Ali Kaiser, who we love dearly, Mark's mother also passed away this week from ALS, and I, I did not get the card here, but we will try and do that. So lift them up in your prayers this week. Join us for prayer on Wednesday night. Now, what can you do? There are some good things. Yesterday, a group of people showed up to paint and throw things away, and we are convinced this building just creates things for us to throw away. So thank you, both Kim and Carol, for putting this together. Please give them a, a, your applause. We need, we're celebrating this. Thank you so much. And also, if you would bring uh, just note on the back, uh, John has asked us to bring for the food pantry um, canned tomatoes and plastic grocery bags. So we're doing that, and you can bring them to the back. So our uh, dear, be dearly beloved Matt and Angela are celebrating this week with their, their daughter Morgan and Ben. And uh, he'll be back next week, so stay tuned. This week we are blessed and honored to have the Reverend Doctor. I love saying that. Uh, Angela Raven Anderson. And the reason I can say that is I knew Angela when we did our, we had to ordain her for a chaplaincy, didn't we? Herb knows this story well. And we did it up, uh, we did it up in the balcony because this was a stage. And so Angela's family, and she is just amazing, and I love her as a sister. And so uh, she's going to bring the word to us today. So I'm going to invite her to come up, and then I'm going to say a prayer for her before I get off the stage, and you can pray with me for that, too. This is a woman who prays with the mic in her hand, so I love that. Where are you? There you are. 
All right. We're going to pray for her. Would you join me in prayer? Father, what an absolute joy it is to stand with my sister in Christ and in heart, to have her and her good husband, Herb, here with us today. It's a privilege, and it's an honor. Fill her, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and flow through fear, how she feels, her words. Flow through her, Lord God, that we may all be filled with you. And we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, 1548 Heights. How are you? Okay, now I'm going to have to tell you guys, I'm used to people talking back to me, okay? So if I say something, say something back. It's entirely okay. Um, The last time that I was here, it was virtual. So you guys could see me, but I couldn't see you. And so today I have to say glory be to God that we are here and in this space. And we are able to gather both physically and virtually this time. Um, And and I'm going to share, I was sharing this with Mark outside, that this is actually my first time, my first time to be back with the saints on a Sunday morning in a church building. So (laughs) I, I, I feel like David when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. This is wonderful. I'm grateful for technology that kept us connected when we had to be socially distanced, but it is a joy to be able to see everybody's face and to feel hearts connected and minds and hearts on one accord. So um, thank you so much for having me back. And I also have to say that I'm extremely grateful to your pastor, Matt, uh, for extending this invitation to me to come and be with you again. I never, never take lightly the honor and the responsibility of feeding the flock uh, while the pastor's away, while the shepherd's in his absence. So um, it is Obviously, uh, my prayer uh, that God's blessings be with him and his family at this joyful occasion and that God grant him traveling grace and mercy as he and his wife return. Well, uh, Anne was saying, I I have to always, as I don't even know if young people say this anymore, I have to give a shout out to Anne um, because in the African-American tradition, there's a term that we use. Now, she called me sister, but there's a term that we use in the African-American church when someone nurtures you in the ministry and they kind of are, have an important role in your development. And we call that person a mother or a father to us in the ministry. And certainly Anne has been that to me. Um, as she mentioned, uh, she and Dr. Mitchell who is obviously in sainted memory now, along with the stewards at that time, ordained me right here. Um, Actually, Thursday will be nine years ago. Nine years ago. Um, Yeah. And, And Anne continues to mentor and encourage me. She prays with me, prays over me. Um, And I would just be remiss not to acknowledge the incredible gift she is to me, as well as to the entire body of Christ. So thank you, Anne. (laughs) I bring you greetings this morning from the family of faith known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. It is across the way a little bit in Third Ward, Houston, under the leadership of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. Today, I also want to acknowledge that I am accompanied by my partner in life and love, my husband, Herbert Anderson, who always is there by my side, prayerfully supporting me uh, through each and every uh, leg of this journey and in my ministry. Well, let's get to it. Last year when I came, I shared with you the benefits of being a member of the body of Christ. We talked about membership has its privileges. And we explored how independent of the realities that we face, COVID-19, civic unrest, racial injustice, God has given us the power 
the power through Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to live victorious lives. This is the incredible privilege that comes from being a member and being indwelled with the Holy Spirit. Membership certainly has its privileges. Well, today, I would like to direct our attention from privilege of membership to the purpose of membership. What is it, this work that God is calling us to, all believers? What, why has he called us together into this body? Well, I had a professor answer this question um, very simply, uh, but yet profoundly, I find. He said, if we are followers of Christ, then we must follow Christ. And so Jesus said, I came to set the oppressed free. I came to declare the year of the Lord's favor. You see, it's because God loves us so that he sent Jesus into the world to do just this. In fact, God said himself through the prophet Isaiah, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teachings, the islands put their hope. Yes, it's a love thing. You see, it's out of God's great love for us that he sent his son. And the Bible says that the Lord longs to be gracious to us. Therefore, he will rise up and show us his compassionate love. For the Lord is a God of justice. It's a love thing. This justice that God desires to see in the world until it rolls like a river, like a never-ending stream. This justice that God wants everyone to experience because he says, I, the Lord, loves justice. It's a love thing. So friends, please hear me. If you take nothing else from this message, please take these two points. Doing justice is an expression of the redemptive love of God, and doing justice is the work that every believer is called to engage in. In this past year, this truth has been magnified in my own understanding as I humbly have begun giving leadership to the social justice ministry along with my ministry partner at my church. And I realize that this term, social justice, has been used and is being used by all sorts of groups. But the, from a biblical perspective, justice is social. Justice is social. It is the first and uh, foremost a relational term. Sedek, the Hebrew, Sedek. Uh, it's a word that means to make right. People living in right relationship with God. People living in right relationship with one another. People living in right relationship with all of natural creation. From a spiritual point of view, justice means loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, and it is rooted in the character and the nature of God. As God is loving, so are we called to do justice and live in love. It's a love thing. Which brings us back to where we began, understanding the purpose of membership. What is God expecting of us? What is he requiring of us? And again, I state that we, if we are followers of Christ, we must follow Christ. And as I look out on the landscape of our nation, these still yet to be United States of America we as Christians must reclaim and recommit to serving a God who shows a particular concern for the least, the last, and the lost. 
the church must take up the mantle and continue the mission of Christ to end oppression in the world. Seeking justice is not the role simply of a, mish, a ministry or a program or a, a group of particularly impassioned individuals, but it is the work to which every disciple, every believer is called. The Bible makes social, social justice a mandate and a fundamental expression of Christian discipleship. It's a love thing. Justice seeking is, in fact, the very means by which we demonstrate, we demonstrate our faith in Christ and we express the love of God to all that are around us. The scripture, in, in fact, exhorts us to stand up for the rights of the destitute, to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ah, you see, this justice-seeking, social justice, it's rooted and grounded in a triune God who time and time and time and time again shows his love and compassion for the weak, the vulnerable, the marginalized, the disenfranchised, the disallowed, the excluded. It's a love thing. And this is the work to which God is calling you and me today. Yes, it's a love thing, but let's be honest. That's where we get stuck. This work, although holy and God-ordained, it's not easy. Good trouble, John Lewis would characterize it, sometimes comes at a high price. Sometimes it means we lose some friendships along the way as we take a stand. And too often, even when we become involved, we sometimes can get distracted or derailed by the, the, the what of social justice because it may involve vehicles that we don't agree with like taxation and safety nets. But instead of focusing on the what, our focus should be on the who and the why which is that it is a love thing. God's perfect righteousness, justice, and radical love divinely wielded toward the restoration of human dignity and the assurance of overall well-being, shalom, peace, joy. Well, so how do we do this? How do we do this? Well, I believe in our text today, which is found in Hosea, uh, the 10th chapter and the 12th verse, God gives us instructions for just how we do this work. And I'm reading to you from the voice translation. It says, plant a crop of righteousness for yourselves. Harvest the fruit of unfailing love and break up your hard soil. Because now is the time to seek the face of the eternal until he comes and waters our fields with justice. God speaks this word of hope and promise through his prophet Hosea to his beloved yet wayward nation of Israel. He instructs them and instructs us today that to engage in this work, we first must give attention to our own hearts. Our hearts must be prepared. You see uh, this agrarian metaphor of sowing and reaping is used to convey this idea uh, because in the sowing and planting, it's something that one does with intention, with purpose, and with expectation. When I put uh, a, a watermelon seed in the ground, I'm expecting to see some watermelons grow up. If I plant corn, I don't expect to see a coconut tree. So when we do this work, we must come at it as we, when we do justice, we do not approach the work with, with wishful thinking, but we approach the work with the intention of seeing change, of achieving transformation. We approach 
with the expectancy of seeing the kingdom of God made real in the world. But as we are doing the work, know that God is calling us to move beyond our own personal piety. In other words, just being a good Christian is not going to cut it. Meaning, just because I come to church every Sunday, just because I'm reading my Bible daily, just because I'm refraining from cursing and using racial slurs, that's not what is required by this word justice, the sedek, the righteousness. No, this word casts a much wider net for us. And because of it, it encompasses all of our relationships, including familial, social, political, and in business, and in worship. It's all, it's all part of what is um, where we are to uh, live out the, the, this justice that we are seeking. When Jesus says, I am come declaring that this is a year of the Lord's favor, that was not the announcement of a party. That was uh, for those Jewish hearers, they understood that to be an economic restoration. Anyone who had a debt or who had lost land in the year of the Lord's favor, their debts were wiped out. All that they had lost was returned to them. What I'm trying to say is God cares about justice in every single dimension of our lives. Every dimension of our lives. And therefore, when planting righteousness for ourselves, we must be committed in every aspect of our being to fairness, generosity, and equity, even when it's difficult, even when it's unpopular, even when it's uncomfortable, because this is the work of love. It means like Jesus, we see with compassion and are moved. We look into the lived reality of someone else, someone other than us, and we intentionally choose to show up to make their lives better. Yep, this is based on God's radical love for us. But before we plant God says we must break up the hard soil, or the fallow ground is what it says in King James. For a seed to take root and to be able to grow, the soil must be tilled. Breaking up the hard ground allows it to aerate and irrigate more effectively. This tilling is a metaphor that God is using to call you and I to repentance, to break up our own hardness of heart, to acknowledge and to let go of paradigms and prejudices that prevent us from being able to see others the same, with the same compassion that God looks upon us. Breaking up the hardness of apathy and privilege that allows one to ignore and turn a blind eye to the unjust and inequitable experiences of others. Breaking up the assumptions that someone, uh, that somehow whatever someone else is experiencing, they must have brought it on themselves. Yes, God is saying, break it up, break it up, break the hard ground of your heart. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them their sin and heal their land. Don't we want our land healed? Heal their land. Oh, friends, it's a love thing that God desires that we all live in harmony. God wants for all of us, all of us to experience healing and wholeness. Jesus prayed, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, 
The third component of this triadic imperative is not only to sow and to till, but it is to harvest the fruit of unfailing love. Harvesting or reaping is the other side of this agrarian principle that represents what I believe to be a universal truth that we see throughout the scriptures. You know it. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. And God is conveying, conveying in this metaphor the inextricable relationship of justice or righteousness and God's unfailing steadfast love. The, the symbiotic relationship of the two that one produces the other, sowing and planting righteousness will produce a harvest of God's love and favor, his grace and mercy. And for that reason, if no other, we should persist, as Paul says, because in due season we will reap if we faint not. No matter how hard the work, no matter if it seems that it's never going to change, we should persist in sowing because we will reap. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that we must meet the forces of love with I mean, the forces of hate with the power of love. And it is the only way because doing justice, justice seeking is a love thing. It's a love thing. It's a love thing. This verse concludes with a final bit of instruction to us. God says that now is the time to seek his face until he comes and waters our fields with even more justice. Yes, friends, we must seek God. We, we must seek God if we're going to do this work of justice. We must seek God for wisdom because in this country, the problems of injustice are often deep-seated and deeply ingrained. They require tenacity and creativity to bring, to begin to root out the cause and to develop real solutions that will allow others to experience love and peace and harmony. We must seek God for power and strength. You know, inequities give advantage to the powerful who often are unwilling to share or redistribute their base of control. We must see God for healing. The virus of racial and systemic injustice is insidious, and I believe it will only be inoculated with God's healing and redemptive love. So, friends, I ask you, Please, I implore you, I beg you to join with me in earnestly seeking God. Seek God. Let's seek God like the woman was looking for the lost coin. Let's seek God. And I think that we're going to have to look for God in some unusual places because he says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness. I'm making streams in the wasteland. So we must see God in those desert places of life, in the face of the homeless, in the face of the hungry, in the face of the dejected and the rejected. Now, now is the time to seek God. Now is the time to see God because he is coming. That's what the word says. And when he comes, he will pour down justice and goodness on all our fields if we have been diligent in our planting. Our God loves us. His promises are yea and amen. He wants all of us to experience the abundant flow of his love. And for us to do that, we must put our total and complete faith and reliance on God, seeking him persistently. Then God will show up and show out. And we can sing the song like the contemporary uh, psalmist Hezekiah Walker says, faithful, 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 
faithful is our God. We're reaping the harvest that God has promised us. Faithful is our God. Therefore, I say to you, we can go ahead and rejoice. We can rejoice in our planting, rejoice in your tilling, rejoice in your reaping, because this work of justice is God's work of love toward us. It is what God wants for all of us to experience. It is what God wants for all of us to be a part of it. Of. And when we do this work, when we do this work of justice, there is healing in our land because this is a love thing. This is the word of the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand up as we sing this last song together. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace. in the song of your salvation and all your people sing along so remember your people remember your children remember your promise oh God your grace is enough your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Oh, your grace is enough, heaven reaching down to us. Your grace is enough for me. God, I sing your grace is enough, and I'm covered in your love, your grace is enough for me. Before we leave this place, I would love for you to take a moment to think about how you want to appropriate what you have heard today. So I'm going to give you some silence before I bless you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Herb, for being here. I want you to just take a second and ask the Lord how you can appropriate what you've heard. Pray with me silently, please. Father, we are grateful that what remains is faith, hope, and love. Put this into our hearts, and may good fruit come from what we have purposed in our hearts today. Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Amen. So this bird